just mic'd up with Mikey Matuk. Got the boys in. I got Lloyd. We got Jay Mitch. We got Jackie Boy. He tried to jump up, and he might have knocked it in. Good timing. Let's go. What a start to the Monday. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm from Lafayette. My boys will come in. Say, oh, oh, God. oh, God. So I'm, me and Joel, girl, I got Joel in the headlock. And he's sitting there, <laughs> he's punching me in the stomach, like, hey, punch me, punch me, punch me. Here, if, as everyone said, who here thinks Ochenko can practice today after having five full beers? And he goes, Chad Jones, right? Chad's doing the team. <laughs> Six for, minutes. For seven minutes, right? Chad's like, no, nah, man, I, I don't think Ochenko can practice today. And I was like, I look back, I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you there. You were more fucked up than me. The only spirit plane had some issues i think she was sleep sleep farting you heard her or you just thought it was her i, I, was, I sat right next to her so. whoa what was that time for the show <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to bring your chinchilla and your turtle? <laughs> my dad tell you about it. <laughs> now she's seen. It's, God, they hate fat people. <laughs> I mean, I get crushed for that. You know what I mean? It's like, come on, man. Hey, you know, just the South, bro, you got a bunch of food down here. Like, they, they just, they just, they just, they just. <laughs> Look at Lloyd. <laughs> you know what, Lloyd? <laughs> You're looking for a recruiting coordinator, Coach. I'm here. <laughs> He's like, I'll piss my pants right now. <laughs> no way. We're wearing gray pants, long gray pants. He goes, I'll piss my pants right now. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Mic'd Up. Today is Monday, April 1st. Some will call this April Fool's Day. We are 6.15. We are starting at 6.15 because I thought Lloyd April Fool's me no. today because Lloyd decided to tell me uh, just a few hours before the show. It hey, all I'm happened running a little quickly, late. Quickly. I'm running a little late. I'm, really, I'm right down the street, but I'm running a little late. Right down the street means Alexandria. Andrea. And uh, but he made it. That's why we're a tad late. We can't start the show without Lloyd, which kind of pains me to say because I we need him, and I don't love to say that I need anybody, but we need him. Uh, but he's here. He's made it. I appreciate the hustle. Uh, seems like he brought his personality. We'll see how that goes throughout the course of the show. But we have a whole hell of a lot to talk, talk about. about. <laughs> um, women's basketball. They Live are in and the, direct tonight. They are in the lead eight. Playing tonight against, uh, some may know, the team that they are playing, uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes. And one they call Caitlin Clark, who had been offered a $5 million contract by the Big Three, Ice Cube. Big, great move by him, I believe. I think she'd kill it in the Big Three. Um, Just too bad. Is it called the Big Three? Yeah. What is it? Is that what? Yeah, it's called the Big Three. It's called the Big Three, right? Yeah. The league is three-on-three basketball league. That will be three-on-three is in the Olympics. By the way, which is crazy. Oh, hey, Van Lee. Yep. And so, uh, you know, he they, he offered her an unprecedented five million. million dollar contract. She will be playing tonight. Obviously, a rematch of the Final Four last year between LSU and Iowa. Caden Clark, obviously, one of the best, if not the best player in women's college basketball. Probably the, one of the most exciting players in all of college basketball. 
uh, goes up against LSU, which has been had a lot of fanfare, had a lot of controversy, some may say, a lot of attention, some may say. Um, but they have put themselves in a position to make it back to the Final Four, make it back to the National Championship. Look at Chris Giot right there on TV, right in the middle. He's always right in the middle of everything. Oh, leather lungs? See. It's unbelievable. He's always, I think he's got – I literally think he has a, uh, a bank account set just for LSU it's, activities. It's unbelievable. Like, it's un- it's just unbelievable. for LSU activities. And I respect it. I love it. Um, it should be a really good game. It should be a very entertaining game. A lot of fanfare and a lot of superstar – uh, superstar still playing in women's college basketball. Um, looking forward to this game. Obviously, Kim Mulkey is uh, standing on top of the mountain right now after people keep trying to cut her legs down, keep trying to bring her down. She's still standing. She keeps kicking them off and shooting them off, which I respect. So uh, we will obviously give you updates. You, I would imagine people, most people are going to be watching this game as we're on the show, but we were watching it as we were talking to you. Wish we could live stream the actual game on there, but we are get in trouble for that. So... Can't do that. Save that for we save that for what person? Yeah. And you have LSU versus Southern, and Unless we have LSU forget. baseball uh, playing against Southern, coming off of a weekend sweep at Arkansas, which I know a lot of the people in our chat probably are want to hear us talk about what we thought about the weekend. We obviously didn't love it; um, wasn't ideal. But um, you know, we're going to talk about why we think that would happen or would happen, and why what we think they need to do better to change this. Um, free-falling season it may seem they're two and seven in the sec second to last in the west uh behind auburn who's one and eight and auburn hasn't played bad baseball it's just the sec is a gauntlet and is extremely tough we're going to get into that conversation in just a little bit men's final four is set uh alabama in the final four uconn in the final four nc state in the final four and purdue in the final four nc state if you don't know anything about with their story, they were one shot away from being eliminated in the ACC tournament. They banked in a buzzer beater. to They had to win the ACC tournament to make it to the, to the NCAA tournament. They banked in a buzzer beater three to win, to move on to the finals, to win the finals. They were 11 seed. They made it all the way to the final four, beating some really, really good teams along the way. They are the Cinderella story of the tournament. Uh, they've been fun to watch. They have a uh, center who's a big man. And I'm not talking about necessarily tall. He's a wide, athletic. Been some conversations with him. Uh, NFL GMs have had some conversations with him about maybe a future in the NFL if he doesn't have a future in the NBA. Uh, So we will see how that pans out. Uh, Purdue beats Tennessee to make it to the Final Four. Almost had two SEC teams in the Final Four, uh, but that did not happen. Uh, It is Monday. We have moved the Ask Mikey and Mitch segment to Monday because apparently LSU now also plays on Mondays in baseball and obviously Jay's show is on Monday. So we can't have Jay on here. We haven't had Jay on in a couple weeks. The schedules have been very weird. Give him some space. And hectic. And I wanted to give him a little space. I'm going to try to get him on on Wednesday. Uh, But it is Ask Mikey and Mitch. Throw your questions in the chat if you're listening to us or on Twitter. You can throw them on uh, Twitter, or not really Instagram, but Twitter, and we'll get them from there. We'll try to answer as many questions as possible. And last thing, uh, Major League Baseball opening weekend was this past weekend. The Houston Astros have started off 0-4. First time they started 0-4 since, I think, 1970 something. Uh, not great, but obviously four games into a 162-game season, a lot of baseball to be played. Um, baseball has been in the news again. That just came out today. Uh, our friend Jeff Passan ah. is back in, back at it. And um, just one time, I would love for Major League Baseball to have a positive headline. Opening weekend, nobody really knew about it. Opening day, definitely nobody really knew about it. It was no, not pu- publicized. You had the Shohei Otani things happening. Did Caitlin Clark just hit that three, by the way? Was that Caitlin Clark hit the three? Yep. Yep, start off hot. Um, Dropped 30 last year, so you got some wiggle room. Oh, listen, as long as nobody else scores, and she's the only one that scores, that's the most important thing. Uh, but Shohei Otani gambling situation, not great. And now MLBPA is having, seems like there's an uprising happening within the Players, Asso- Players Union and the Players Association. Um, haven't really been that forthcoming or that the communication hasn't been great about where the money is going 
finances, how much people are getting paid, all these types of things. So not great. We're going to maybe get into that, but the majority of the conversation is going to be, oh, man, that's not good. The foul on Angel Reese. Um, well, you saw it happen last uh-huh. in the Sweet Six, or yeah, in the Sweet Sixteen game, wherever the game changes whenever she gets fouled, like whenever she gets in Kim's foul trouble. Kim's wearing green. I know. Interesting. <clears throat> I know. Interesting. Baylor shout out from the I article. Mean, that, I don't think so. Block right there. Oh God, we gotta stay on our feet here. Wait, so Andrews didn't get called for no, foul. No, oh, they, they called, called the, the other girl. On the other girl. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, the cars come out, chucking that thing. Um. But we'll see what happens. Obviously, this is a conversation. We're going to talk a little bit about it, but more about baseball. Great shot. Haley Van Lith made 3-2. And obviously, we're going to give you updates, live updates, on the the women's basketball game now. Um, So this weekend, it happened. You know, we talked to you on Friday after the Thursday game. And uh, LSU got beat on Thursday. Played a good game. It, uh, you know, it was right there for them to take at the end of the game. Gave up one big hit to Arkansas. The game ended up being seven to four, and you move on to the weekend with your number two and number one and number two pitchers still available to pitch. So Luke Holman, who's been lights out for majority of the year, right? His last outing, he only didn't go five innings, uh, but he only gave up two earned, and so you feel like he was going to get back on track. Started the game off really hot, and then kind of hit a little bit of a speed bump. He had five walks, five strikeouts. Didn't get to the, didn't get through five. Through four and a third. Bullpen came in. And um, it was a very tight game, right? LSU was winning, and then they weren't winning, and then they were winning, and there was a tie game. It went into extra innings, again. and again, and uh, they ended up not being able to pull it off in extra innings. They lost, and they go to Sunday, and Sunday was the game I think that was the most disappointing because they were up four to one. You felt like they had total control of the game. They had. Scored a run, and then they when they uh, Arkansas scored another run, they tied it one one. LSU scored you the, two to make it three to one. Then they scored another run to make it four to one. You're like, okay, here you go, because they scored two. They got the inning. zero, clean inning. Here's the one. So now you got two straight innings where you score. You're like, here we go. Then they give up a three spot to Arkansas, makes it four four. Yep. And then they give up a three spot to Arkansas again to make it seven to four. LSU scores a run, makes it seven five. They are. They have an opportunity with the go-ahead run at the plate, and Tommy White and hits a homer. That, that wasn't a homer, right? And so they end up losing the game 7-5 in a really close, hard-fought game. All three games were very winnable, right? They were right there in the grasp. Arkansas has been winning all the close games. LSU has not. And so they put themselves in a bit of a pickle. Yeah. They are now 2-7 and seven in the SEC. Season is not over with. I just want to make that extremely clear. It is not over. Over. Don't wave the white flag. Now, winning the SEC is tough. Not likely. But that's okay. You don't have to win the SEC to make a run in the postseason. Cyborg, it's not over with. And you got to also remember, they got Vandy coming here this weekend. They go to Tennessee next weekend. Don't, if you don't get a 6-0, 5-1, 4-2 showing over the next two, still get off the panic yeah. button. Here's, Those are two very good teams, and there's a lot more time left. I'm glad you said it. Here's what I want to say. So Vandy's six in the country. They are six and three in the SEC, right? You have a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series here in Baton Rouge. And it is a – I hate to say it, but, yes, you want to win the series, right? You want to win the series at home. You have to get some momentum moving forward because, like Jared said, you're at home against Vandy, and then you're on the road against Tennessee, who are both very good teams. If you go three and three in these next two series, you are now five and ten in conference play. Okay? So not terrible, but also not great. But then your next 15 games, you're at Missouri, right? Winnable games. Yep. You're against all you're playing Auburn at home, and Auburn's a good team, beatable. I mean, beatable. they are able to beat they're Auburn, capable of beating you. Auburn swings it. Their pitching's not – it's right. near the bottom of the league. That is one you need to feast on. Right, and so you, they are 1-8. and eight. So that's two series that you, you know, feel comfortable about. Then you have A&M at home, mm. right? And A&M's playing really good. Braden Montgomery, I uh, would love to have him in the lineup. And I'm not – look, it was a decision for him to go to, to A&M. He has 16 home runs on the year. He's hitting almost 400. He's playing really good baseball. Um, but A&M's playing hot. They're hot, right? Now, this is in May. So LSU's got some time, but 
but that that'll be your third series. Then you got at Alabama, which Alabama's a good team, but yeah. they're not as good as Alabama. Some of the teams I'm gonna tell you right played. now of the of the schedule you just put together, Alabama's the one that scares me. But it gives you time to kind of get some momentum going and start playing well. No doubt, and you end the season at home against Ole Miss. So my point in saying all of this is, yes, it doesn't look great now, and you, they've got to figure some things out pretty soon. But you get through this first 15 games, the back 15 aren't quite as hard. Now, it's, it's the gauntlet of the SEC. Every series is going to be a battle. Every series is going to be difficult to win. But – they did LSU no favors with the schedule. They don't, but no, they front, like Auburn, no, had, Auburn right. hasn't had schedule had favorable Nobody's schedule got favors. Yeah, I mean, yeah. What's the difference? You get one weekend, the next weekend you get yeah. blasted anyway. Like it doesn't really There's matter. There's too many teams in the SEC that are good for you yeah. to have a favorable no schedule. Yeah. Right. Um, but you know, if LSU goes three and three or four and two, God forbid they end up getting real hot and going five and one. You know, they put themselves right back in the mix to make a run at a fifteen and fifteen. That's my that's kind of my um, benchmark right now. Fifteen at, at two and seven, I think fifteen and fifteen is a good mark. You know, I'd like for them to beat that. Obviously, I like them to go seventeen and thirteen would be amazing. Two and seven in the SEC, they have a lot of baseball to be played. I think fifteen and fifteen puts them in a regional host situation. I think some people don't believe that. I don't believe that. I think with the SEC and the teams that they're going to have to play and beat in the next month and a half 15 and 15 may very well put them in a situation where they can host a regional at least um but you know without looking too far ahead let's kind of talk about this weekend what went wrong which i think we know what what went wrong we can talk about it and how do we fix it i said from the start before this sec season even started really my main concern was because I do think it's a real thing, man. Like, especially you had the team that was as good as it was last year and it accomplished the things that it did, right? There's another level to it also as well. When you have that and a lot of those guys leave, no matter what you bring in behind it, it does not matter. It is really hard to duplicate that kind of attention to detail that kind of ability to fight through tough situations because the group that left also had a ton of experience before they were exiting their, on their way out, right? And that experience kind of brings you the ability to know when you have to rise your gameplay and when you have to meet what's being kind of pushed on you as well. And to me, going into SEC play, I was worried about if, doesn't matter what it looks like, pre-conference if these guys would be able to understand or how quickly I should say they would be able to understand that you don't get to live off of last year's success it's a new team it's a bunch of new players and you got to bring your own level of success your own level of intensity your own level of matching what the other team's going to put against you now like you said the good part about it we're only literally talking about three weekends into the into the league right there's seven more weekends there's a lot of time left there really is whether we whether we want to acknowledge it right now because they're two and seven or not there's a ton of time left but with that being said there is some growing up that needs to happen and it's got to happen quick yeah in the lineup in the bullpen in the start like on the start there's some growing up that needs to happen quick and i think guys are kind of starting to see that that urgency needs to kind of start showing up in their play no doubt and you, you mentioned the young guys right you mentioned a bunch of young faces and new faces i think there's a couple guys you're going to see a lot more of i think you're going to see a lot more ashton larson he had his yeah. first home run of the season um or of his career on sunday <laughs> he's put together some really good at bats coming in off the bench i was about two games early for uh, him being yeah i picked a clip. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um but like he he has put together some really good at bats yeah and you saw it coming even saw off the bench right like, i i we really saw it coming off the bench you really saw it coming last week in the end of the game where that's usually the time. That's the telltale time, whether it's a, whether you're up big or down big. When they start pulling players and they say, hey, you need to get in there and give them that bat, they really want to see what you're going to do in that right. spot. And usually when you respond well, it's a telltale sign of you're going to get more chances. And yep. we saw that coming. Go ahead. And so he is obviously taking that step, step, step forward, two steps forward, three steps forward. He seems every time he does, he's put something in the bucket, right? Drop something in the bucket every time he comes in the game. So I'd imagine you see him a lot more. Um you need someone else to. Bingham had a couple homers on Sunday. He's swinging the bat pretty good Swing right now. Bat, yeah. Um, 
So you have really two guys, three guys in the lineup that, you know, are swinging the bat pretty well, you know, and Bingham and obviously Tommy White. And Tommy still hasn't gotten to the hot Tommy White yet, but that's because, and Jared called at the beginning of the season, they're spinning it, pitching around him. Arkansas's pitching staff is probably the best in the country. Yeah. If one of the best, if not the best in the country. LSU struck out 38 times over the weekend, right? Now, in this day and age with people throwing so hard and the way baseball is um, set up, Strikeouts are going to happen. But if you're going to strike out that much, you need to start keep putting pressure on the defense. And we've talked about that a lot over the last couple of weekends, especially since SEC started. They haven't felt like they've done that. So unless you struck out 38 times, you'd like to see them get on base. They've only walked seven times this weekend. Which means, and like I said, Arkansas's pitching staff is good. But that means Arkansas is not walking you, not giving you free passes, well, not giving you opportunities to drive guys in as much. Compare it to what Arkansas did. That's what I was getting like. to. So Arkansas struck out 30 times, right? So you're like, oh, okay, that's a lot there. Right. But what else? But they walked 23 times, mm. right? So they are now getting 23 free passes. To your seven. To your seven that's against like- a bullpen that really hasn't been lights out in the SEC, in which I'm not saying they can't be. But they haven't been yet to this point. And so they are constantly putting pressure. If you watched the, the Thursday game, they constantly had pressure on the pitching staff and on the guys on the mound. And finally, in the eighth inning, they broke through with yeah. the three-run homer. But, but what's, what's that pressure? Ducks on the pond, man. Absolutely. Like, ducks on the pond makes, makes it a little tougher to pitch in tight situations. And, like, think about it. If I'm playing basketball and we play a basketball game and I'm beating you 23-7 to seven in the paint – there's probably a good chance you're not beating me in the game. Right. right. If, if everything you, has, you have to do is that much further out and you got to score from deeper, it's going to be tough for you. Right? So just off of that alone, man, it's hard to get wins and find wins and find runs and find yourself in situations where you're leading when, you've, when you're being outwalked that much. Yep. And some may say two and seven, it looks daunting, especially with the it guys. Does. They should. You have 21 games left. Right. Right. If you go 21 and 0. Well, that'd be great. <laughs> if you go 12 and 9, host or you go, regional, host a super, go to Omaha. You have 21 games. So if you go um I'm trying to get the number. So It's somewhere in the back of his brain that that could happen. Put the gold jerseys it's on. It's close. You go 13 rally possum and 8 <clears throat> over the next 21 games. Right? Which is possible, possible because that's not if you look if you look at it that way. Thirteen and eight's not like oh my god, it's winning series. That's winning series. Yeah, if you go thirteen and eight over the next twenty one, you are fifteen and fifteen in conference play. That's very realistic to do, right? Especially now, with the, the way that your schedule was front loaded early on. Right now, you have to go and you have to fix some of these these things that are happening. You have got to get better starting pitching. Not one starter. Got through five innings this year, this weekend. Second weekend in a row. Okay? That has got to change because you cannot wear the bullpen out. The bullpen ERA has ballooned since SEC play has started. And I'm not saying anything to trash these kids. I'm not saying anything I don't think they don't know. That's just the reality of it, right? If you're giving up runs and you're not scoring runs, you're going to lose games. And there's got to be – you've got to make a change offensively, not necessarily putting in people in and out the lineup – but a mentality or something's got to flip. Baseball is a game of streaks and peaks and valleys. Right now they're in a valley. You hope that they come out of it, and they're constantly putting pressure on some defenses, getting hits, having tough at-bats, making pitchers work. That's one of the things I think that's different between this year and last year's team is you don't feel like they're having as many quality at-bats. And I think that's a concern. Yeah, I I mean, I would love to sit here and point at the bullpen, and the bullpen hasn't been great. But to your point, if you go two weekends in a row, six games a row in a row in conference play, and we can't get a starter through the fifth, listen, there is not a bullpen in America that's set up to have that many guys in the pen being able to throw 30, 35, 40 pitches back to back to back and night in and night out. It's and not, not set give up. up anything. It's not set up for that. That, that. Nobody's bullpen is set up for that. You are going to have to start getting quality starts and a lot better and, and, and even if the starts aren't quality, when you're leaving in the fourth and you're down or you're up one, you're putting so much stress on that pin, right? 
you're going to have to start getting quality starts and or, which we obviously knew wasn't going to happen yet, or you're going to have to leave in the fourth up eight. Good luck. And that's what you said. You're that's like, probably like not going to happen because LSU. we knew these guys were going to need some time to kind of game on and kind of get into it. So the starting pitching has got to get better. They have got to start showing up like they did pre-conference and conference play as well. And I think when you can start getting that, you can start putting some bullpen performance into it. When you start getting some bullpen performance into it, you can probably start getting some real offensive performance into it. And then you may see the team start going at that point. And I would say, uh, to your point, like, would you rewind that all the way to Thursday by going Johnny Holstaff and putting kind of your bullpen in a spot where, okay, because I, I would say you only used one guy that you consistently have used all year, and that was Gidry. And he was the one that gives up the big, like the big, you know, the backbreaker. Yeah. But that's how, like, you've seen that they can consistently do because they got guys everywhere. Right. Where but here, here's, here's another, here's. Because he's, you got to set yourself up. He's for this. going with guys that he feels comfortable with right now, right? And you've seen him do that since he's been right. There, talking but about you've got other guys in the bullpen that hey, if we're losing on. games right now, and so it can't get worse, right? Like we're losing games, so. If this guy, let's let's see if this guy, look, he did it with Cam Johnson. He put him in a situation, and he kept him in there, and he made a big pitch, right? Hopefully that builds his confidence. Thatcher threw to two guys. No, three guys this weekend, threw one inning. Those, the, the, the Friday game that was a walk-off, he struck out the first guy, gave, in, gave up an error, right? Made an error at shortstop, and then gave up a double, and it was a walk-off, right? And so... When you're in situations like this and you're in games like this, those like the littlest thing matters. And had I'm not saying the error lost in the game, but I'm saying if you make that play, now that double is just a double. It's just a two out double and he has another guy to get out, right? You have to be, especially against the number one team in the country, you've got to play error free, disciplined baseball. Especially if you're not scoring a bunch of runs. And that's – there's got to be – you've got to see a difference in that. Um, but I do need to see them give more opportunities, some, maybe some guys in the bullpen, right? Some guys that have electric stuff and you say, hey, i, I got to get you out there. I'm a – so – and I <laughs> – it's crazy to me because, like, I'm in agreement in the sense of, like, you need to be able to give some the ball to some different guys. But we're, in my opinion, we're getting to that point of the year where – a jack of all trades ends up being a master of none. If we keep flip flopping this thing and so many guys are getting limited opportunity, so many guys are in and out the lineup and up and down, it makes it hard for these guys to settle in and actually kind of go. Now, I'm not the coach. This is Jay's decision, and we watch Jay Tinker be able to move people in and out, but seemingly you had a, a strong five, kind of felt like six guys where you almost could close your eyes and you knew where they would be last year. He's got to kind of get somewhere around there, I would imagine, and I'm, I'm, I would guess that he's shooting to be able to find that in that lineup, and it kind of becomes the same thing with the pin. But uh, we'll go back to what we spoke about earlier. You got to start getting some quality starts out there. You got to start getting some That's... guys who can push themselves past four, five, and into the six, and maybe pitch into the seventh inning. Then you can really start doing some nasty stuff with the bullpen at that point. I'm trying to find the numbers – on the pitching staff as a whole, right? And I thought D1 baseball, but it's all individual stuff. It doesn't have team stats, which is kind of weird. They don't do that. What are you, um, what are you looking for in particular? Just ERAs. Okay. Um, are you looking at it? Are you looking it up? I'm pull, yeah, I'm on there. Um, on SEC on South, SEC Sports? They, they usually have it. Um, but yes. Pitching staff has to go deeper in games, right? Like you brought these guys in. Wow, look at LSU making a t having it on a ten zero run. run. Mm -hmm. They are, Iowa got out to a a pretty decent sized lead, had a lot of momentum, and seventeen nine at one point. Michaela made some shots, a corner three, a couple threes. Haley Van Lith made a uh, mid range. Like they they're making. I think Angel Reese had the had yep eight some putbacks for LSU. Yep. Uh, but for ERA wise for LSU baseball, you have Luke Holman that finally has. Reached over the broken the one earned run barrier. He's at one three eight. Um, Griffin Herring, two point eight four. I thought was probably if you want to find somebody that 
you want to circle and, and like look, highlight. Here's the deal, he, Griffin. He was awesome. Griffin may end up getting some starts. Yeah. Like Griffin, we talk about Kate Anderson, and I still think Kate Anderson is going to end up finding his way in the rotation. He's throwing today. Okay, he's throwing today. So maybe he'll be pitching on Saturday. He'll be available again on Saturday at the bullpen if they want him to. But I would imagine you're going to see Griffin Herring maybe get that. When did Griffin throw? Did he throw this weekend? Yeah, he came in for um, – Was it the Friday it game? Holman. Yeah, he had he had a stretch, I think, five or six straight strikeouts. Yeah, he, threw, he, he struck out through. six in a row. I yeah. would imagine – Retired maybe, seven. And maybe he comes in and pitches – maybe he starts on Thursday. You know, maybe. You have two straight – I don't know who's going to start, but – that third st- spot's open, because Thatcher didn't start this weekend. They had I, Johnny Holstaff. I don't think you can you can't afford to do Johnny Holstaff again if your if your starters are not going to go deep in games. And that's where I think LSU is an interesting spot because whether you like it or not, if you want to say that they did it to keep everybody on the same day's rest, I think you flipped that from what you did. Like I don't think it didn't work, but I don't know if you want to compromise yourself the way that you did. I think you'll see probably. I mean, would you be surprised to see Holman go Thursday, or would you think you'll see him on Friday? I think, I think based off what you saw last week, you're gonna see him on Friday. Okay, and then that's I mean, maybe they bump him up, but I just don't think so. And you wouldn't do, you wouldn't start Griffin. I'd, I'd imagine they go Coleman again Thursday. I mean, he didn't pitch terribly, but, but he walks was, too many guys. He walks too many guys. Yeah. And so when you start getting into like the ERA of all these guys, like you and have, maybe, and maybe he does move. Holman up to Thursday, and maybe he moves Gage jump up yeah. to Friday, and maybe he throws I think, Griffin I think on you, Saturday. I think you see – I really do think you'll see Holman on Thursday. I, I I think there was a strong belief of I need to find any kind of way to get to here, and it obviously didn't happen. But pitching, not matching Holman up with Hagen Smith, I think was, was kind of the off. idea. Yeah, I think it was a one-off. I, I really do think you'll see yeah, because, yeah. The, the, the rotation move up to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and kind of keep it that way. Um, because as much as you, as I guess as bleak as it feels like for LSU, they're not far off from being this listen, record in the SEC being flipped. There's like three. There's, there's three wins that I could legitimately yep. look at and say they should have won. The Florida game, right? And look, they win that series. It looks feels different. The Florida game and two of the three games this past weekend they had an opportunity to win. Saturday, the second game for sure. In the Sunday game, they had a Should've 4-1 won. lead, yeah. right? And like the Saturday, yeah, Saturday game, yeah, right. or the, the third game, third game, yeah. I, um, I think to me, like the telltale sign to me that tells me a team needs to grow up is the amount of games they've kind of gotten blown out of the water right now. First off, this team's weight, they're they're talented, so let's go ahead and get that straight. They're not lacking in talent. They're not walking out there and they roll the balls out, and the other team's just better than them. But two Sundays ago, three Sundays ago, you see them getting ten run ruled. Two Sundays ago, they got 10 run ruled. This Sunday, they were up and down, and they and they lose all of that. So to me, that's where I'm like, all right, there's growth that needs to happen there. We know there's talent there, but there's growth in the ability to kind of meet the pressure that's being put on you and start performing to that. And that when when we when I feel like we can start seeing that is when I feel like that's when this team will turn a corner and kind of get themselves going in the right direction. Agreed. Do we have any questions? Ask Mikey Mish, throw them in there if we don't have any yet. Huh? I said throw them in there if you have any. No, no questions. A lot of uh... (laughs) negativity. Yeah. And and that's part of it is that I feel like a lot of when you're watching LSU, it feels like the – while you have like ducks on the pond, there's not a lot of hits with runners in scoring position and other teams are doing that to you whenever they – it feels like just there's no – good mojo going into a series like even when you're up 4-1 it didn't feel like that game was ever close to LSU like slamming the door 10 running a team like you saw last year it's a lot of hold and hope as opposed oh, they're, to they're in the rut yeah they're in yeah. the rut right now it's you can tell it's a lot of guys playing very 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 tight right like even the ball even in the in the walk-off loss this weekend the ball that you watched uh Braswell misplay he, he makes that play he makes that play so you can tell guys are getting to spots where they feel like it's the moment and they're not shining to what the moment is. You, When they break through of that, that's when I feel like this thing kind of turns around. You just don't want that to happen too late to where you're not really in a run of things. SEC has <laughs> 14 teams in conference. <clears throat> what, 12 teams make the tournament? Right? So I'm not saying they want to be the 12th team in the tournament. They just need to put themselves in a position. Wow, look at Haley. They need to put themselves in a position 
to make a run at the end of the year. And to do that, you've got to say, all right, let's take a step back and say, okay, is this what are we doing wrong? Are we are we working hard? I'd say the answer is yes. Are we doing the things right off the field as far as like preparing? I would say yes. So what's what is what's making us lose games? Well, some of the little things on the field. Maybe we need to just grind out some at bats more. Maybe we need to do uh, you know, make it a little bit tougher on the opposing pitching staff. Maybe we need to lock it in more and say, okay, I'm not caring about strikeouts. I care about just throwing the ball over the plate. Whatever that may be, they've just got to kind of like nut up and say, at this point, it's up to us. Coaches can only do so much. At some, at some point, it falls to the guys in the locker room to say, all right, we just got to figure this out ourselves. See, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I've never really been one to love the, the saying – Let's make a run. When's the last time you've ever seen a team actually win it that their thought was, let's make a run? Well, right. And don't get me wrong. That's fine. You get in the playoffs. You play deep into the playoffs. We pat you on the back. Great season. You turned it around. That's good. That's cool and all. But I think when you adapt that make a run mindset, then you never really kind of get to whatever your ceiling may be. You've got to start thinking a little bit past making a run. Now, they're not in a spot, like we said, there's seven weekends left. Like, they're not in a spot of make or run. It's, let's get right. If you get right, you can actually do some good things, right? And I think that that's where they kind of get a get. I think the making a right is the making a run in my head. You know what I mean? Making it right is putting themselves put in a, a couple, position to win together. games. Yeah. To win games, right. Yeah, I'm not saying like, oh, just go on a 10-game winning streak. I'm saying, hey, let's put ourselves in a position to where we are playing good baseball so that we can start winning some baseball games, right? Like it's well, that's you're what, not playing what, well right now. That's well, just here's it comes the thing. down to it. They're not finishing games right now. They're not playing a complete twenty seven outs or a complete nine at right. this point. They're playing good at spots and at times in the game. So for me, it's I don't. I guess that's the reason why I don't like saying let's make a run because I we can point at times in the game, and I don't mean just play here and play there. We can point at stretches during the game where I'm sure the team and or multiple guys on the team feel like they're playing good baseball. So that might be missed when you tell guys, let's make a run. Because they're like, well, shit, what I need to do? I've been playing well anyway, right? So I, that's for me, that's where that, that, that conversation kind of goes because I want to see you. We got to get over that mindset and let everyone know, like, make a run. That's cool, but let's get right. You get right, then you can do some special things. Because we all know this team still had defense aspirations at the beginning of the year, not make a run. If yeah, that makes sense. They've, they've lost games in the SEC. Their bullpen ERA is 11 maybe over a little bit over 11 their starters era is over seven and a half and their batting average is sub 250 in the sc games and you're lucky to be in any so of those games. when i say make a run let's start playing good baseball yep what and i think that's and you what, win games that's, that's what, the issue i think the way that y'all like if you put both of those thoughts together that's what it is it's a complete baseball game you haven't seen lsu play a complete game yet you're getting different outputs from different players every game but it's never been a full sec Mm -hmm. lineup from top to bottom where everybody played well like i know that's hard to ask in baseball but you have bingham hit a solo shot you have tommy white start off a game big solo home run run. team right now right and that's not playing complete baseball that's whenever you have runners in scoring position you're not doing anything to capitalize on it and when other teams have runners in scoring position you're giving up whether it be an error or whether it be a big hit in a like clutch time for whoever you're playing that's what's happening. Like that, it shit's rolled. Shit rolls downhill, and that's how LSU is playing. It feels like you're already under the gun as soon as the game starts. Even when you go up one nothing, when you put Tommy White at the leadoff, hits a home run, but then he grounds into or hits into three double plays in the same game. Like that kind of stuff's happening, and that you're in a tough spot. Like it's they, not gonna happen forever. The the momentum and like that stuff swings both ways, right? right. Like you just like you said, like they're in that rut right now where it feels like. No matter what they do right or how good they play, oh, the bad's coming. The Four strikeout one. with with the strikeout with the runners on second and thirds coming. The the routine ground ball error might be coming. The two four pitch walks in a row is coming. Like something's coming to make it go the other way. Because when you let's be honest, when you when it's going good, those runners on second and third, it may be the homer, it may be the broken bat single over. Like something's gonna happen, right? Right? You get the two walks instead, and then move guys over. Like. The other things, they need to get to the other side of it to where the other things start going right to where you can start feeling good about what you're doing and start playing. I mean, I mean you have, what, bases loaded one out with Travinsky up and you don't get a run out the game. 
Like you don't that's, need to run in that situation. That's the stuff that that's how you lose baseball games to me. You've got to figure out a way. Somebody needs to figure out a way to get hits in those situations. Right? And that's where I think you find Jay like fishing for a lineup. And you don't even need to get necessarily a hit. Just get a guy in. If you got base loaded, no outs, you can get two sack flies and score two runs, and that's it. You don't necessarily have to have the hit. And that's how Larson has found his way in the lineup. He gets a home run, and then he, he also, like before in the previous game, he gets a sacrifice fly with, when he has people on, what, second and third, one out, and he flies one. He hits one the other way to be able to score a run. Like, they're not doing the little things correctly, and that's what's killing you when you're playing and teams that's the number one team in the country, right. sure. And, but, and I don't want to sit there and trash. No. Them at all, right? Like, But that's they, how Larson found himself in the lineup. Yes, because he does the, the little things, right? Winning yeah. baseball plays, right? That's that's really basically what it is. It's plays that win you baseball games. You don't have to hit 500. You don't have to do what Charlie Condon's doing. You don't have to do what Braden Montgomery's doing. Yeah, that helps to have that in the lineup. But there have been opportunities with guys in scoring position, third base with less than two. Whoa. Whoa. Go oh, hey, hey, Third base with less than two outs to score. Put my heart in the shit. Yeah. But they haven't <laughs> done it, right? Like, they haven't put themselves in a position to come up with those situations. And look, pitchers nut up, and they throw better, and they throw nastier pitches. But you've got to figure out a way to score those runs. And you know, to your point, nobody the lineup hasn't consistently done it together. And I think that they'll figure it out. But two and seven, like you can't go look up this weekend and be two and ten. I think or three uh, and nine. I, I, I like I'm 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 gonna be honest with you. I'm right there with you when it comes to what we're thinking of over the next two weeks and what they need. If there is a, if you had to circle a must win series on the schedule at this point, I think it 100% comes this weekend. Because if you can't win this series and then you have to go on the road next weekend at Tennessee, that's gonna be tough. And you take those two series losses in a row and that may be the dagger for you on the year because that hill may be a little too steep at that point. I'm really trying to find LSU stats in conference play, and it's pissing me off how, how I can't find it. Like, there should be a way to do that just in SEC play. Yeah, I got you. How do you do that? Where do you find that? I'm on LSUsports.net. I'm on there, I'll, too. I'll put it in the, uh, the doc here. So I don't want individual stats. I want team stats. Just SEC games, not all the season. That's what I have. You sure? Because I'm looking at what I'm looking at is not that. Did you see the link that I put in there? Refresh. Where is it at the bottom? It's in LSU. Yeah, it's at the bottom of LSU baseball on the dock. It says static.lsusports.net backslash assets. Let's see. Team cumulative season statistics, conference only statistics. There we go. So being a former SID. You know, wow, helps a little bit. Okay, so Brazel's hitting 400 in conference play. He's been playing great. Isn't, right. it, isn't he the guy that people Nothing. don't think can hit at all? Yeah, people don't think he can hit. But you have, he's the only one hitting over 300, right? In conference play. So, now Tommy's got five homers. He's hitting 263. He's going to end up, He's gonna, I mean, I, I like where he's at. He's going to start playing better. But this is really what I wanted to look at. The ERAs, you got, wow, okay. You have Griffin Herring at a .9 ERA. He's got 10 innings pitched, 14 strikeouts, two walks. He's going to be pitching a lot more. Yes. Luke Holman's got a 3.6 ERA in SEC play, 15 innings pitched, 21 strikeouts. He's given up nine walks. He, didn't walk, he only had eight walks, I believe, before SEC play started. 16 hits to nine walks. Yes. Gage Jump has a seven ERA, 6.92. Thatcher's got a 10.8 ERA. Also nine walks. Right. You go down underneath that in the bullpen, Will Hummers is leading the bullpen ERA with a 5.4 ERA. Ackenhauer's got an eight. Lohr's got an 8.3. Coleman's got an 8.3. Gidry's got a 10.3. Bronzini's got a 13. K. Anderson's Anderson. got a 16, but he's only got one, two thirds. So like, a lot of these don't have a ton of innings pitched, right? Because they haven't, you know, they're out of the bullpen, so they haven't thrown a, a whole bunch. I mean, you can even look But my at point in saying that is you're not – they're scoring runs. Whether you throw an inning or you throw 12, they're scoring runs. So, like, that has to change too. 
You're you just haven't in the SEC. You haven't been great on either side of the ball, and that's that's just that's an issue. You're not going to win if you're giving up runs. Or you're not scoring runs. You're giving up almost four and a half runs just from the like the bullpen. Their total ERA is seven and a half. That's combined with everybody, right. and their opponents' ERAs against them is four and a half. Yeah, that that's which what, means the differential is three runs. That's a lot of runs. Yes, on average. Yes. So, like, you want to point out what's going on? That's what's going on. Griffin Herring is good. Holman's good. Jumps good. Third's good. We have talent. They're talented guys. Just it's not it's not it lining up at the same time. That's what that's how you play losing baseball. You give up seven runs and you score four. You're not going to win a lot of games doing that. At least well, you're going to be two and seven in the SEC right yeah. now. Yeah, you know, and that's. And I'm not saying all this to trash anybody. I think if they one million percent can turn around. I think this weekend you're going to see a different type of baseball team. You're going to see. I won't call them desperate. You're going to see a team that knows. Hey, I got to come out here swinging. There's going to be some energy. They're going to be aggressive. Like that's what's going to happen. Hope I don't know what the score is right now in the game, but hopefully they get off to a hot start. And, you know, they, they do what they need to do, but not great, Bob. And when you even see the lineup that they put out today. Who is the starting lineup today? You go Bingham, White, Larson. Larson's in the three hole. Larson hitting third, playing left. Yep. Bingham playing center. Yep. Obviously Tommy at third. So Bingham, White, Larson. Jones, Betton, four hole playing first. Travinsky, DHing again. So no, no longer behind the dish. Like you saw him. I think that was kind of getting to him as well. Him catching and trying to be the the guy on offense, kind of. I think the totality of it all kind of. Well, adds I don't up. think they really had a choice this week, and simply because I agree. they had the two lefty starters, so it was yeah. either gonna. I think they I wanted think that Fry was, and yeah. Fry and uh, yeah, Travinsky in the They line. wanted the right-handed bats in there this weekend. And so you see him DH. You put Neil and Wright, mm-hmm. Broswell at short, Ben the pole getting a game at second. I think that's probably just Milam getting a day. Because uh, he hasn't played poorly. I think he's been your probably most consistent infielder aside from, I mean, him and Tommy have played the best baseball as far as fielding the ball goes. And then Malazzo at catcher and Anderson on the bump. It is zero to 0-0 zero, as Kate Anderson had that for the second. Okay, so they got through one. They started the game at 6.30? Yeah. Um, all right, well, you know, obviously this is a game that's... shocked if they lose, but I don't know if that even matters at this point. No, no, it matters. Play it a, matters. Yeah, no, but I, I just want to see them play a game where it... I, I don't expect them to go out in like 15... This 15 game's, nothing go win. It's This game's not going to tell you anything. Exactly. It's not, but you need them to do what they need to do and win this game. Not a 4-1 to one game. Like, they need... This needs to be a confidence game. Like, they need to look up and they need to have 15 hits, 10 runs, like... And if they don't, it's not over. But, like, it, that'd be nice for them to have one of those like that. Kind of get a frustration game, get all the frustration out. Yeah, we'll but see what happens. you didn't put a lineup that is probably capable of that when you put Napolt in and that's one guy. Malazzo. No, I'm saying, like, that's more of, okay, these guys are going to get me on base. Like, I, he's searching for something, whether it be consistently, and it's not going to – those aren't boppers. Like, I don't think Napolt – what does he have one career home run? I don't know. Malazzo has neither of them have a home run this year, so it's more of trying to find maybe these guys get on base. Like you're searching for something. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think he's searching for guys to give him consistent good at bats mm-hmm. to be able to like like you spoke about the entire weekend. Like, look, we can all sit here and tell the truth about it. We n- nobody thought Arkansas's lineup was world beaters. 12th right? in the SEC? Nobody thought that you saw them go up there and were like, man, this lineup absolutely scares me, right? But they were able to pretty much put pressure on LSU all weekend. So I think he's looking for, like you said, guys who are going to go up there, find their way on base, and continue to put pressure on the other team's pitching staff, however that may be. Because you saw him try fry. You saw, I mean, I guess Paxton clings on hold at the moment because that's where it, it kind of starts and ends there, right? When you, if he was able to give you consistent at bats well, that weren't 0 for 16, like that's tough. But I'm not yeah, blaming him. I yeah, I don't want to put all that on him. No, I'm not. But I'm saying like that's kind of where the LSU woes have started. It's like okay, you start finding people in positions where they're not supposed to be, whether it yeah, be, that's how that's how it always goes. And I see. Here's the thing: we sit here and say like we don't want to put it all on him. It's not all on him. I think everybody knows it's not all on him. But I think he can look himself in the mirror and say, Damn. I need to be better. Yeah. Right. And I think sure. it's fair to sit up for us to sit here and say we expect him to be better because he's a much better player than the way he's playing right now. 
And that's okay. That's all right. Because I think the ability to be able to get to the other side is recognizing that and then go ahead and doing something about it. I think as a whole, the whole lineup can look at that. I don't, yeah, I think, I don't think there's one guy in the lineup that we look at and say, oh, he's doing what he needs to do offensively. Maybe Tommy. But, but, Tommy's, but, hitting, Tommy's hitting 265 in SEC play. He's got five homers, but he's hitting 265 in SEC play. I can throw this question out there. Like, How often do you usually see that happen in a lineup where the lineup is struggling? Though? Right? What do you mean? Usually it gets going together. Like you mm-hmm. got to get guys oh, for going sure. together. It's, pro- it's usually pretty hard to find a lineup that's – Underproducing, and then one guy who's still setting it on fire at that point. The only one, the only lineup I can think of that's doing that is Georgia. <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> what guy? For some reason, people yeah. still don't believe in Condon, but he's real. Yeah, he's having a, he's having a monster season. Brady Montgomery's right behind him though. Condon's hitting 500, Brady's hitting 380. I get the average is different. He's only got three home runs less, which is wild to me. And he's pit, I don't know if he's pitched much, but he's pitched a little bit. But yeah, when you get back to LSU, it's those type of at bats where you have and they even like we talked about this where like do you break up the three four five guys they tried that too and it was still tommy yeah. solo home run we, we like we said we talk about and the reason like no i'm not trying to pinpoint the man and call the man out but how long did we beat the thatcher heard drum last year saying this team's only gonna go when this kid really turns it on what happened he turned it on they went and natty this team will go when Paxton Kling turns it on, it, yeah, and if and yeah. if it's not Paxton, someone Somebody. to step in and do it in that spot. It's really that simple. Because you're getting better performance, I would think from like who would you say is consistent? Like I, I would say <clears throat> that Roswell's overperforming at the plate than what you would think you would get. Bingham's overperforming at the plate than what you think you would get. Well, I think Bingham's performing exactly what you expect. Yeah, that's, yeah. Say, that's kind of what you would think, I guess. But it's been I don't I didn't I mean, see you the, the you love the Big Twelve. I mean, you love the Pac twelve and hits. Yeah, like so average. Like, you get you're kind of getting what you're getting. Yeah. But those are the two guys that have been consistently like I would say uh, if you want to say overperforming, you can or at least guys that you could pencil in every day. You've got five of them. Yeah. That's the, that's yeah. where the troubles come. Is the other. You have the four. infield, right? Your infield. Yeah. Is basically your starters, and then you got Bingham. Everyone else, they've they've tried to mix and match, and that's tough when you got four other guys that you don't have a starting. Those other four guys aren't starters. There's a bunch of different starters mm-hmm. that are evolving in yeah. and out. Like it's a tough to get your rhythm. And I'm not like Jay's doing what he needs to do to figure out and make sure. Hey, okay, we got to score some runs and get some energy in this lineup. And you know, at some point, somebody's going to need to step up. Now, and at some point, Jay's probably going to say, you know what? You're the guy. Go, two weeks. If it just keeps doing this, he's gonna have to pick someone. He looked at it and said, "Okay, you've done the best out of the four guys we've tried. We're gonna run with you for a couple weeks to see if you can kind of get hot." Larson, and that's what it seems like. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like tried it with Fry. Well, yeah, I mean he got there a few starts, and, and be- like Fry's gonna be fine. He just, you know, it's, it's a dude. Arkansas's good, really good. They're the number one team in the country. Their pitching staff is really good. Yeah. That's all, that's, I mean, and you're playing on the road. They've never done that. Those guys have never played in that atmosphere in that type of environment before. Yeah. I, I think Jay's also made a decision, which I get, to kind of at times split up the Tommy White, Hayden Travinsky, Jared Jones kind of trio a little bit. And I think, I just think to each of them's own, I guess, individual performance, it's kind of hurt them because you haven't really thrown the protection in there. Like tonight, you're going to have a freshman hitting behind Tommy. Tommy. Nothing wrong with it tonight because I don't think that the team that's on the other side of it is going to be able to execute enough to really make it really matter. I do think in conference, though, that's when it kind of comes to the thing. So I think those guys in conference, like, they're all kind of somewhere right in the middle and not. That's what we talked about, though. That's going to stay that way. I promise you it will unless you get that fourth, fifth, and or sixth guy to actually start being a constant contributor, a constant in the lineup to where it's like, okay – there's more than just these three guys to be legit scared of, right? Yeah. So now we actually have to start pitching to these guys as well. I think when you can kind of get that going, that's when this thing kind of goes a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And then you got it. The minute you have, and here's the talk about con, like hitting being contagious. The minute you the minute you start you know working walks or getting on base, and then a minute one or two guys start getting a couple hits and runners in scoring position in big situations. Then everything start. You kind of feel like you can exhale and take a deep breath, and everything else will start to follow. Like that's contagious. Yeah. Right. You start driving guys in, 
uh, with two outs or runners in scoring position, you start getting some RBI singles, like that stuff, like that carries throughout the course of the team. And so that's, you know, you just need somebody to be able to do that. And I know I'm not saying anything that's, you know, like people are watching the game, like, duh, like, that's obvious. But like, there's no magic bullet. Like, this is what has to happen. They're you know? consistently inconsistent, if anything. Yep. Yep. Like, it's not a good recipe as of now. Um, and it doesn't get any easier. You got two really tough opponents these next two weekends. You got Thursday, Friday, Saturday at home against Vandy. Vandy is, you know, always going to have a super talented always team. Always in the conversation, man. Always. Always in the conversation. And they come here on Thursday. So figure out – kind of figure out, um, the, the, you know, how to get through a game. That looked like the, the roles reversed a little bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, Kind of figure out how to, you know, win a game or do what you need to do to win this, right? Or win the series. And you got to play Tennessee. When we come back in on Wednesday, we'll obviously have a lot more in-depth preview of the weekend and what Vandy does well and what they don't do well and how I think that, or how we think they should attack the Vandy pitching staff. Um, but it's Monday and we have a game being played on the basketball court and on the baseball field. So we're not going to really jump into that preview yet because we have Wednesday before the Thursday game. Um, 45-45 at half, or LSU women's basketball yeah. as they match up with Iowa. Caitlin Clark has, I believe, you have a stat 19 line? at How half. Much, what's uh, LSU's? I mean, it's been a high, like very high-octane, fast-paced game. Like very fast-paced. Yeah, it's been a game of runs. What's the uh, what's LSU's line? Let me pull that up. Angel Reese has 13 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists at halftime. That's what it says via ESPN <laughs> on TV right now. So you have Anissa Moro with 6, Faje with 4, McCallum two, Williams Two big with ones eight. right at the end. Angel with 13, Haley with 7. Yeah, so it's been pretty – Kind of like, going to get from everywhere. Pretty, yeah, pretty good. balanced. I think – I haven't really been ma- being able to pay attention much. Who's been guarding Caitlin Clark? Anybody? Is it anybody? F- Flage? It's been Van Lith order and Flage. Flage. I feel like Flage is going to be. She's been very key. As good as you half. can be in the tournament, huh? She's been as good as you can be. I think she's, she's been the MVP of the team in the tournament. Yeah, she's had twenty one and twenty four in her last two games. And so I think that she's going to be a key in the second half of this because she's going to have. She's got the length and the athleticism. To hopefully and look, Haley's doing a, a Haley's a really good defender, but I think Flage Flage's got a little bit more range, dynamic, and you know I think she feeds off some of that that defense offensively. So I'd imagine she's gonna have a big half, big second half. And that's what you got from Alexis Morris last year against yep. Caitlin Clark, who I think she gave up, I think thirty one. But it was a – had to work for every bucket, 31, and then Alexis was able to turn it up down the stretch where she was able to give you offense and defense. From That's going to be the big thing. This perspective, it feels like if you're – like, just give me one or the other. Like, I would like to see Flaugier be able to play, all, like, offensively, and then if you don't get Van Lift scoring, that's fine. But if she's able to play good defense, yeah. then we'll take that. Yeah, I think uh, the more things change, the more things stay the same right here with this team in a sense of maybe not in the stat book, <clears throat> down the stretch of this game, but if this team wants to kind of get where they want to go right here, Angel's going to have to be on the court at the end of the game. She's going to have to be a big part of it. She's going to have to still be playing a role down the stretch of this game. No doubt. Trying to see the fouls because you, obviously you saw her foul oh, yesterday no. or two days ago and then talk, so I'll talk a little bit to the bench and then that got almost uh, to a technical situation, but... If Wait, she's was that, able to say again? Against UCLA, she fouled, fouled out, then oh, talked yeah. to the bench a little bit. You saw, like, the coach was like, that's a technical, and she was like, whatever. Obviously, that's more things change. They stayed the same with the coverage of LSU women's basketball, Kim Mulkey, Angel Reese, where you even had a beat reporter for UCLA have to come out in the Los Angeles Times and retract a statement. They redid the article yeah. that was written about the – the bad girls of the you know of college the basketball. dirty debutantes the dirty debutantes is what was, they say was retracted and it was good versus evil with UCLA who has twenty two thousand followers on Twitter where LSU is almost at a million. <laughs> I think that they're carrying 
the sport at the moment. I don't think it's UCLA as so uh, as such or as how he tried to frame the narrative. Well, hmm. and, the, and then the Washington Post had to, you know, they made us they made us think what a nothing burger that they were about to put out some this enormous article, and then nothing, <laughs> nothing. Like honestly. If anything, I feel like it was a better article for Kim than it, than she could have even expected. Like this is, it made me like her more. And yeah, that's that's what we were talking about this off here. And I do wonder if that Kim getting in front of it made them kind of go back through that with a fine tooth comb and be like, all right, what, what's what's in here? Is I gotta make sure I put out facts or right. what someone said. I can't just make assumptions. Right. right. This is not a. It's not an op-ed. This is a because it, it turned out to be more of like a almost like a biographical piece more right. than a. Right, like opinion. This is what you should think. These are all just kind of like fact based, and it was. I mean, obviously we are closer to it than most, but like there was nothing in there that I read. And I was like, oh, shocker. It was a lot of okay. This is very much by the book what we know about Tim Mulkey. Yeah, the swing and miss on that it's one. A big swing and a miss by yeah. Pat Forty circling the wagons. Well, no, that's the crazy part. He didn't even write it. No, but he was like I've never seen a journalist promote an article about another publication that he is that they're not even involved with. Couldn't That's wait. wild to me. Yeah. Right? Like you're you're promoting an article written about somebody that you have no nothing to do with. You're not part of that company. It's kind of crazy to me. I mean, I don't think he is, right? He's not part of the Washington Post. Is he? No. Yeah. He has no... I mean, it's wild to me. Never seen that. Never seen it before in my life. Never seen it. Um, all right. All right. I mean, that's just baseball. No questions, I'd imagine. We put the Ask Mikey Mitchell late last minute. So, if you got questions, you can ask him on the Wednesday show. Um, that was an hour of LSU baseball. What else do we want to talk about? You want to get off, get off the LSU baseball co- topic and talk about something else? Get back to our roots of the show and just talk about nonsense? I don't know. Are you tired? You're worn out? I'm about tired. It seems like you're tired. Anybody want to throw out some topics or are we just going to let's just have a conversation about having a conversation? It is halftime. Tied. I did put a little LSU bet in. LSU one. What'd you bet? LSU plus two before the game. So Is that what the line was? Mm-hmm. I'm sure you can grab it at half, and it would probably be something similar. I mean, it's tied, so that makes sense. Right. Seems that, like Vegas says what they're doing. Usually, 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 how that, usually how that works. I did bet them on also uh, the Friday game. Did you? Holman. Thought I had oh, you bet it. baseball. Yeah. Hmm. What was that line? I did money line. It was minus 140 with Holman going. Wow. Lost. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> Can't get right. <laughs> no, it's been tough. It's been a tough stretch. Um, ben DePolt, pick to click? No. <laughs> I mean, no offense to Ben, but no, he said one yeah. home run in his career. I don't think that's that's going to happen. Um, anybody, you think anybody upsets UConn? Are they going to go and just run this thing out? I mean, the way they played and looked in the tournament so far. <laughs> NC State's a Cinderella story. I don't think they have a shot. Purdue's got the seven foot four guy who doesn't get any fouls called on him, or he or walks called on him, or three second violations called on him. Hey, you know you're large when you literally look it on TV in front of a bunch of trees. Well, he, he cut the nets down <laughs> without the ladder. Yeah, yeah. He just seven stood four. up on yeah. the ground. Seven four. Um, very good player and thick. Yeah, like and <laughs> very good player. Well, but he doesn't. I mean, he sits just sits in the paint because like, he's thick. Because he's thick, <laughs> and he does not. He get has three, no fun to watch. He doesn't get three second violations, and then he does all these moves, and I feel like he walks every time. He's a very good player. Sure. Seven foot four. If like, he's not seven foot four, I don't know how much we're talking about him. And people are call, talking about the foul discrepancies throughout the course of the of the tournament. I understand that. But you also have to realize, like they play through him. Yeah. Other teams are shooting more, more jumpers and more three pointers than Purdue is, and they're playing through a center. They're doing old school basketball, right? And so, like, they're obviously going to have more fouls down there because the guy is seven foot four and thick. 
clear. So he is going to give a lot more issues as you get more fouls called against him. I, so I get that, but, you know, some, I mean, there's been videos where he is literally in the paint and not resetting for like eight seconds. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. What? I'm just put, I'm getting to the women's basketball. I just want to see some of the stats because we have not been watching. So I'm just Alabama gonna... though, Alabama's uh, shooting their way into it. There's only been two teams in one national championship that have shot more than a thousand three pointers in a season. Alabama's at like nine hundred and sixty something. So you'd imagine they're probably going to shoot thirty some threes in the next game. Cause that's what they do. Um, Injuries has two fouls. Okay. Poa has two fouls. Flage with one foul. Del Rosario with one foul. Who came in and played valuable minutes for you against UCLA? I think if if they if LSU does get to the final, I mean to the uh, yeah to the finals, the championship, and they have to play South Carolina, I think Rosario yeah, is going to be a key because she's going to she's the, size wise is the only one that's as big as. Uh, old girl from South Carolina. Yeah, and you've seen her come in and give you five fouls. Like it's not so and much. That's okay. About, yeah, no, I think that's what you. Hey, bang around there for do. three quarters. If you foul before the fourth, like, did your make job. it difficult on her. And I'm not saying like hack her, but like size for size, like make it make it hard for her to, to score points. That's what she does. Now you got you got to win two more games to get there, but yeah. This is a, this yeah. is a big. I mean, obviously everybody got what they wanted with the Caitlin Clark Angel Reese matchup. But this is a as close to a championship game as you can get aside from probably yep. LSU South Carolina with the the ratings. And it's hard to repeat, right? So LSU getting to the lead eight or getting back to the final four a year after winning, like it's a success. Yeah. So for all of you that think that they should have repeat, like they it's that's hard to do. Yeah. Especially after you lose Samaya Smith in what, the first game of the year, your other big. Yep. And you don't, you lose some depth with uh point guard. You got kicked off the team. The point guard got kicked off. Know, you lose depth. Name. You lose depth with that. He's going to the games, actually. Really? Yeah, she's there. And then Alexis Morris obviously gets, goes to the draft and gets out of gets out of college. Like you lose a leader there. So, you know, you have some some big pieces to replace. It's just hard to do. Period. When that that kind of a, a tournament, right, with so many teams and you get so little time to prepare for each other, like it's it's hard because anybody could get got on on any day in that tournament. Oh, you saw it, and I think that the LSU UCLA matchup was as probably as good as you can get, as opposed to like getting you ready for a like that's when it happened last year against Utah when you saw like the the competition ratchet up in the women's tournament. It becomes all right, all these teams like it's obviously usually pretty much chalk. Whenever you get to like you do a bracket, and you're like all right, just pick all the one seeds. Like you're seeing Paige Beckers play well for UConn. They could be Juju, Juju for USC. And now you're start like you're starting to see that these teams are you're gonna have like what was it, Utah last year they won by three and you had a girl that missed two free throws at the end of the game and LSU's able to capitalize. Like this one it gets to as close as you can get to everybody's pretty much parody is here. Yep. Yep. Um all right. Let's get to the seggy so we can watch everybody can watch the second half without us talking in their ear. Let's get to the segments. <laughs> Mistake of the day. It's your your Seggy. Mistake, Mistake of the, of the day. Brought to you by Lloyd Courtney. It's me today. <laughs> I'm a, uh, I guess, follow me under a domestic abuser. I broke my... Oh, it's yours. Is, you are the mistake of the day. Yeah. Wow. That's why I was late. I broke my... Not really a domestic abuser. It's... That was an accident. Tripped over a cat, hit a foot, broke a foot. So mm. that's why I was late. We're still online like, trying to find a boot. Because I was, you know, I've broken my foot. And I was so in, is it officially broken? Have you gone get X-rays? So that's why I said, "What's the point of going to the doctor? They can't fix it." So is this broken foot. Do you know it's thing? broken? Pretty sure. That's a no. So you know X-rays were done. No, that's what I said. It's like, it, does it hurt? Said, yeah. Like, okay. Well, so, I stepped on my wife's foot, and she thought she broke it. No broken bone. Oh, that's what I said. They're either gonna tell you it's broken or it's not. So there's really no point in going. They're not gonna do anything. What if it's a displaced fra- what if it's a displaced fracture and it's you have they have to reset it? I don't know if you know. What if it's a ligament deal? All these things are in consideration. No, I don't think you consider any of that. We didn't. I know that. 
So uh, a buddy taped it. You told it. us it was broken, man. Yeah. It might be, but I taped it up. I did my best ace oh. bandage wrap. Buddy taped the toe to the other so toe. So you put, you put the ace bandage on it or you taped it up? I did the uh, pre-wrap. So neither. <laughs> <laughs> is it broken? Uh, it might be. I mean, I'll get it. You taped it up. I put the ace bandage. Ace bandage. Is it black and blue? Yeah. Okay. It looks broken. It looks broken. There's the Alex was black and blue too. It was not broken. But that was the uh, that's the mistake of the day. Wow. All right. Uh, current oh, calls. Well, I heard it. Okay. Snap. Current. I yeah, I broke uh, ankle. Okay. Current calls brought to you by our friends at Assured Partners. And me. Okay. What we got today, boys? I'm gonna lead this one off uh, since we're already in the middle of the game. I don't want to get too far with it, but Lloyd, cue the uh, video of this thing. I'm gonna go back to uh, what was it two days ago, a day ago? I'm gonna go back to Flaugier Johnson's uh, post game press conference, if you will. Her response to kind of what her motivation was in that game is, to me, deserves a curtain call. It's pretty cool. It's, it's, it's cool to watch stuff like that. So Lloyd, run that. I've got it here. Thanks for extended time with two fouls. Here's Skulky, muscling inside, gets it back and gets fouled. Parents do what they need to do to watch their children play. Is good again. Clark had to be careful with those two fouls. Her back in on the time. I played it. Oh, but I, we don't have it. We on can't see monitor. it on there because oh, the, the yeah, game's so long. Oh yeah, I was like, yeah, hey, give me something here. That's up there. <laughs> no, it's cool. I forgot I, that I, I watching the best. Yeah, the know my why. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, I heard it. We, we, I mean, we've all done stuff. It's kind of hard to kind of get yourself up and do things when you're literally the only reason that you're doing it for. So to be able to find extra motivation outside of yourself to push yourself, it's hard to do sometimes for people, and people don't understand how big that is into getting you to kind of play above wherever you may be, whatever you may be at the time. And so her being able to identify that and bring it in, in a game where she was instrumental for LSU getting to this game against Iowa, curtain call to flush it. Love that. Lloyd, do you have one? No curtain call for me today. I have one for you. Lloyd, you can, yours is Kim Mulkey. Oh, you know? nice. Yeah. So uh, I have two. So Kim Mulkey, obviously, um, the article that was written on her that was supposed to be damaging, I think, if you're a competitive sports person. Uh, wow. Caitlin Clark for deep, from deep. Um, coming, out, coming out the – Yeah. <laughs> if you're a competitive sports person, um, I think you – read the article and, read, and look at Kim and like, man, I think I like her more because of one, she, she doesn't f stray from who she is and you know what you're going to get. And she's going to try to get, she's gonna get the best out of you. So my current call is to, Hey, something was supposed to be negative ends up being reversed and it's positive. Got out in front of it. Won it. Uh, my other current call is to you. Ooh. Ah, so we started the show. Uh, it's our third baseball season. We're going over a little over two years, and we started the show with the hopes of it becoming something bigger or bringing more opportunities to whoever on this show. And my co-host and friend Jay uh, has a really really cool opportunity um, with the sports entertainment company called ESPN slash SEC Network. And Jared, if you want to watch Friday nights, right? Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday nights, um, post games in the SEC Network studio. He will be in the in the studio, recapping all the SEC play for SEC Network. So, congratulations! Big opportunity. Pump the show for us up there. Hopefully, we grow the show through you up in ESPN. Hopefully, we can we can all join you up there at some point. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh a blessing opportunity. I don't know what they were thinking about letting me on this thing, but here we are. But yeah, man, it's it's, it's going to be cool to kind of represent the show and kind of be able to push the show and bring some more awareness to this thing. Kind of no grow doubt. this thing. So it's cool. No doubt. It's cool. Be our he will be our SEC inside now. Yeah, you're gonna. Yeah, I expect the document from you now. No doubt. I got, I got no. I got nothing, fellas. <laughs> no doubt. Um, Shut up, old Delucci. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and Todd. Him and Todd. Todd. Him Todd. And Todd. Todd. Uh, <laughs> 
So great That's opportunity, awesome, dude. Very yeah. pumped for you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, gonna be awesome. Looking forward to watching you on TV. So, um, from doing stand ups outside of single A baseball, triple A baseball. A triple A baseball oh, on the yeah. road to stand up. SCC. Whatever you don't remember, whenever we called you in your uniform. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, fellas, I think I'm coming to the studio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's birds. Hey boys, it's, it's time. It's time to go home, man. Taped up. <laughs> <laughs> to the SEC Network, so congratulations, sir. Congrats, dude. Um, so, yeah. They didn't return my call. Yeah. That's all we got for today. We'll get it working. Yeah. Got um, this producer. We'll be back live in studio on Wednesday from 6 to 8. Hopefully um, after an LSU win. Hopefully two after LSU two wins. LSU wins. Um, and talking about the Final Four. Of hopefully pre- LSU women's basketball. Hopefully we'll be prepping for the Final Four. And we will have a preview for of the Vanderbilt. LSU baseball series. So. And maybe we'll get Schwartzy. Maybe we'll get Schwartzy if they win. I don't know if he wants to come on. It's bad. Maybe bad luck. Uh, well, we have With the run they got, you know what I mean? You don't want to. consistently wanna... have been mushing everybody. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's not good. That's not mushers. good for the show. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, dude. boy. She's hot. She is. That was unbelievable. She's hot. She's going to. She's she's on page for 40. They I mean, that was. Up. And that was good defense by Van Lith right there. Up. Didn't let her go right. She had separation deep. And Up made six. It. This is usually LSU's quarter, too. The third quarter is when they've been able to make their runs. They did it against UCLA. Hopefully you see them. Oh, man. Yeah. She's got the ball in the string, dude. Yeah, she's good. Um, they go as she goes. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you can't watch us and you like listening to us or anywhere, get your pods. We appreciate all the support. We appreciate all the love. We'll be back again live on Wednesday uh, with guests. I would imagine we have to, you know, they got some things going on right now in baseball. Can't have a guest while the game's going on. They don't like, you know, Jay doesn't like the live in-game interviews. I don't think we've made it there yet. Maybe you will be having it at C Network. Maybe you'll be the one interviewing them. That'd be great. Nashville? Um, no. Charlotte. Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Um, great little town. So enjoy the rest of your Monday. Enjoy the rest of this basketball game. And we will be back Wednesday to talk about it all. We love you. We appreciate you. Peace.